Welcome to my workshop. You are watching Casual DIY channel. And in today's video, I'm going to show you four ways that you can reinforce your picture frames. All right then. So you've got your picture frame all glued up, nice and perfect mitres. So why would you actually like to reinforce this in the first place? Well, the joint, the mitre joint uh, with end grain to end grain is actually very, very weak joints. And usually most of the glue is actually sucked inside of the wood itself. On top of that, changing seasons and moisture content in the surrounding area of a picture frame will cause the joint to work. And in most cases, eventually it will make some cracks in the joint or break apart um, in total. However, reinforcing um, the mitre joints can actually add a visual effect as well, which I'm going to show you in today's video. Now I'm going to show you four options that I tend to use when putting uh, together my picture frames. So the first option, a biscuit joint, okay? Mm. It will allow you to create a slot in the picture frame itself on the corner, and we're going to be able to install in spline. So that actually will add additional benefit to the picture frame itself as it will look nice, especially when you add a contrasting color spline. So let's crack on with it. Make sure to put your picture frame on a nice and flat surface like a workbench and that it's clamped really nicely. Then you need to set up your tool. So the blade itself from the biscuit jointer will go in the exact place you want it to go on your picture frame. Now I'm set up and ready to go, so let's make a plunge. Okay, so now what we need to do is actually to create a piece of timber, a spline that would fit in that slot. You can do it in many ways. I'm going to use my table saw to do that, but you can use a piece of timber and a thickness planer. You can do it on a bandsaw, whichever you feel comfortable of doing and whichever tool you've got to hand. And there you go, that's enough for my needs. I don't have to go for the whole board. Obviously, if you don't feel safe doing that, a bandsaw or a thickness planer would be a better option to do this. And there you go, I've got my spline ready. So it fits just in that groove, just like that. And I really do like this method as it gives you contrasting uh, pieces of timber and the looks of the picture frame is so, so much better. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna apply a bit of wood glue um, whack it in place, leave it to dry, and then after that, with our saw, we're just gonna cut off the excess. And now I'm just gonna give it a quick sand. And check that out. When you apply a bit of finish on it, it will look absolutely great. However, if you don't have a biscuit jointer, but you do have a table saw, you can still do this method. And that's method number two that I've mentioned, okay? I've got this really nice cool jig that I've made for my table saw that will allow me to cut a slot in the corner of a picture frame on my table saw. So if you want to use this method, as you do have a table saw, I've got a full a video on how to make this jig. So I'm gonna leave a link to that down below in the description of this video so you can go and have a look and make this absolutely fantastic jig for yourself. And it can actually do a lot more, not just <laughs> cutting grooves or splines in picture frames. It does actually have few more uses. So definitely check out the video. Also, um, I made a video on how to make a jig to cut out pieces for your picture frames at correct sizes each time. And that jig is for a miter saw. So if you've got a miter saw and you want to cut accurate and repetitive pieces for your picture frames, I do recommend you watch that video as well as that's available and it will be down below in the description of this video. But that's not all. Also have a clamping jig to put your picture frames together so you don't have to worry about some strange setups and additional clamps that may work or may not. This clamp will give you perfect results each single time 
easy to make, easy to set up. And again, the links down below in the description of this video. So as you can see, I've got a whole playlist uh, where it comes to uh, picture frames, how to make them step by step. So I'm hoping those videos will come in handy for you. But let's make the cuts on the table saw right now. Nice and simple to use. As I said, the toggle clamps actually uh, make it work super, super quick. Uh, make sure to set up the correct depth of your blade uh, so it rises to the position you need for your picture frame to be. And obviously the position where the blade needs to go through your picture frame as well. As you can see, it's a super quick and easy way of reinforcing your picture frames. Um, it's just one of the ways you can use this jig for. Look at that, absolutely perfect cut. All right, with the groove cut out on our table saw, so I'm now ready to add the spline as well. Similar way, add a bit of glue, cut off the excess, and a bit of sand on the outside perimeter. Now it's time for the next option. For the next option, you're gonna need a dowel, in a force a bit that will be the same size as your dowel. That's the back of my picture frame. And as you guessed it, with the force a bit, we're gonna create a groove through which the dowel will go. Again, glue it in place, cut off the excess, and that's gonna reinforce the back of our picture frame. If you want it, you can drill the hole through and make a feature out of this. However, I think it's best to actually have it at the back of your picture frame so it's not visible, but it all depends what look you want to go for. So let's make it a hole. Okay, let's add some wood glue. Add a clamp to it. And now we're going to wait for the glue to set. After that, we'll cut off the excess and sand it a little bit. And check that out. Came out really, really nice. So it could be a feature on the front if you really, really want it. However, at the back, you know, nobody's going to see that if you're not interested in that particular look. However, the additional strength from that is really nice and solid. Okay, now it's time for the fourth option, the easiest, the quickest way of uh, adding some extra strength uh, to your picture frame or mitered joints like these. And I'm gonna use a specific tool to do that. Basically, I'm just gonna shoot a couple of brads each corner uh, to give that extra reinforcement. Now, the way I've got my air gun set up is that it will overshoot. So the nails will actually go a little bit deeper. Now, that will give me an option to add some wood glue, use my sander without the shop vac and actually cover that with the wood glue and the dust generated by sanding. And you won't be able to actually see um, the heads, the pins of those nails. Of course, you can use uh, just normal nails if you don't have an air gun, but then the heads will be visible. How much that will bother you, that all depends on you really. But if you can actually get um, nails with those little pin heads, they won't be that much visible and you can still try to push them a little bit deeper into the wood and use the same method I'm gonna show you now on hiding the heads. So let's shoot a couple of nails in this. So as you can see, the head of the nail is actually gone through. So we've got a nice little void here that we can actually fill in. Add a little bit of glue. And now we're gonna sand it off a little bit uh, without the shop vac connected so the dust will remain in that void. And check that out, it's hardly visible. And there you go, that's my four favorite methods to add some strength to a mitered picture frame like this one. Let me know down below in the comments which one you prefer the most, or maybe you've got your own that you use and it works for you really well, so just share with everybody as well. Now, my favorite one is actually uh, the one with the table saw and the jig itself, as I do like the uh, looks of a larger spline in the picture frame, but again, 
that's just me. If you did enjoy the option with the dowel, um, I've actually got a video on how to make your own dowels with a router table to any size and any material. So I'm going to leave a link to that as well in the description of this video. Now I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, drop me that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I've got some really cool playlists for you just over here guys with some really cool projects around the workshop, woodworking related and everything else. So go and have a look and hopefully I'll see you on those videos there. Take care.